in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, Russell Wright, NetworkEmpire.com and ThemeZoom.com and I'm glad to have you on the call today. And we are going to be rolling shortly as the line begins to fill up here and we're going to be covering Domain Web Studio and some of you probably received the little note that I left about what we'll be covering um, the DNA pretty much, keyword DNA. And uh, Matt is with us. Hi everybody. And uh, yeah, let me just take a look and see. So I have a few people getting on the call. We hope that your week has been going well. And yeah, I don't have too much to say. We're going to kind of jump right in and just offer a replay. I'm just going to wait until right when we hit the hour here. And also, I would like to add before we begin that we're just getting all our systems in place here. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them in. Uh, those of you who attended last week noticed that we were pretty relentless about at answering and receiving questions. We're finding that it's very helpful as we move into the full network empire fusion between Domain Web Studio and the Kraken uh, semantic technology. As far as we know, nothing has ever been done or tried to, no one's ever tried to do what it is that we're doing, which is integrate a semantic analysis technology and vertical research technology with kind of push button web integration. I've been working on it five years, so you know it's not that easy. <laughs> and we're pretty we're pretty close and we're very excited. Um, I'm really grateful to my team, Matt. Uh, Sue Bell is not going to be on the line today. Matt and I'll take this call. Um, without a team of hardcore visionaries and pretty expert programmers and uh, business aficionados, it would not have been easy to even imagine what it is we're moving towards with the full network empire software, enterprise software. Okay, with that, okay, looks like we're good, Matt. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, people will um, hit the call. We're going to try to keep this under an hour today. Okay, I don't know what kind of scope creep we'll get. If we get some questions that are too juicy to pass up, we'll continue and extend a little bit. Uh, it's late in South Africa, so I don't want to keep Matt, Matt up too late because he has a lot of development work tomorrow. So. With that, I'm just going to go ahead and lead the first part of this presentation, um, and then Matt's going to take the more technical side of it. So Matt, let's just go ahead and uh, go through the first area. What we're going to do is, just in case we have people who have never been on the call before, uh, we're going to give a little overview. It's a slide presentation. I'm going to make it really super fast, because most of you have seen it before. Um, Matt, feel free to jump in if you've just you know, got something that you really want to add. So the whole purpose of the Domain Web Studio is to create a, a multimedia personal brand broadcasting network that includes both syndication and promotion. It's also a universal outsourcing tool that's designed to manage any number of outsourcing staff to create any number of size uh, networks, uh, any number of websites for any uh, competitive level uh, for any reason. Okay, in the presentation we're going to end the we're going to go from the back of the process forward. The reason that I cover this part first and Matt and I set it up to go over this is because backlinking, traffic, 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 that just seems to be everybody's big thing. That, that is the universal pain okay, in the SEO, online traffic, and current cybernetic environment. Whenever you hear me uh, see the, use the word cybernetic uh, for the duration of this call, what I'm simply saying is a world that is important to both machines, like robots and al algorithms, as well as human beings, such as social signals and traffic signals, which are becoming more and more calibrated uh, as important by all the major search engines, okay? So the reason we start from the end, which is the um, syndication promotion module, is just so you know where everything's going to go once you sharpen your sword and you sharpen your mind, and you're able to use this thing really quickly and then even outsource everything we're showing you. We can move on to the next um, thing, Matt. Okay. The, yeah, I could get into those charts, but we're going to cover that on um, the upcoming in the upcoming webinars. That's really just showing you how your traffic is r rising. So here's some pains that we remove. This is the purpose of this application. Okay, Matt, just go ahead and hit them. No more trying to figure out what to do next. That's the big thing. No more losing control of your team. That's huge. No more getting lost in specific promotional tasks. 
no more worrying about which angular text to use. That's a huge one for those of you who are super hardcore technical and also read a lot of the buzz and what I believe is a lot of kind of garbage in the SEO industry. Um, and there's so much stuff happening in the SEO industry that um, taken out of context, uh, which it almost always is, you can really get a wrong idea about what penalties are caused by what. Okay, no more worrying about optimization penalties. Okay, and I think no more losing spreadsheets, tasks, people in action, um, and no more losing promotional and social account details. I don't, for those of you on this call, I don't really know um, if you have the same problem that a lot of intermediate users have, which is everything is everywhere, all over the place, your tasks, your promotions, you don't have a process map. Everything's on spreadsheets, which can be good if you're great with spreadsheets, but we're trying to um, centralize that. Okay. Let's go ahead and move into the next. Oh, no more losing promotional and social account details. That's useful. You don't want to um, have everything all over the place. You want to have redundancy in your system. So here's a quick overview. Um, Matt, I'm going to let you kind of uh, go over this because this is really showing how the broadcast promotion, this is kind of the workflow process. And since you're, you, you're a presenter, um, you know, you can just kind of go around it. I'll just insert any, any specifics that I have. No, sorry. Yeah, so basically what happens here is um, at the end of the show, once you've built your website, you've done the DNA bread, you've written your content, you publish your site, you've got it live, then you, and you've optimized it, then you come to promote. And basically the way the promotional plan works is you create your promotional plan and you assign tasks to either your writer or your promoter. So what happens is you assign the tasks over here, that goes to the person you're having write your content or create your media. He'll then go and create the multimedia in whatever format it needs to be, okay? It then gets pushed back and you quality control the, the multimedia. If it fails, you simply reassign it back to the person. Else, if it's good enough, you pass it on to the guys who do your promotion. And these are typically the guys who go and uh, they'll go publish the stuff on the web. So if you Squidoo, for example, they're going to Squidoo, they'll create the accounts, they'll take your content, they'll publish it there. And then they'll say, okay, cool, I've published it on the web, and he'll mark his task off as complete. Now, when he does it in DWS, DWS will ask him for the URL where he published it. And as soon as he puts the URL in, DWS gives you RSS feed out, which you then feed into your one feed system, which then syndicates that piece of information across the web through all the RSS channels, through hub, uh, hub platforms like... Um, uh, ping FM, postures, that type of stuff. And what happens is all these properties then backlink to your piece of content that you published, which then links back to your primary content. So that's typically what happens with the promotion and syndication system. And it's a dynamic environment. Yep, yep. and there's, there's no real limits to what you can do. One of the things I want to clarify this week, since we're you know, kind of getting into this a little bit more, uh, you know, we're going through the tabs quite a bit more slowly, uh, is that there, there's not a limit to what it is that you can do. If you have a link wheel or a link pyramid or a link hub, like there's, just go on Fiverr and find out how many like gimmicks and structures and layered link, linking systems there, there are. There's a bunch of them. And we, we have built into the infrastructure of this platform uh, an optimal linking structure that we know works. But the, the variable are the plat is the platforms that you use, the systems that you use. So in this module, we have opened it up, and with additional value, we're making sure that all our team has gone through the platforms that we're recommending. Now, what I've discovered in this environment, and you guys can probably relate, is that it's changing every day. Something that rocked yesterday can suck tomorrow, okay, and even faster, actually. I mean, I've got four monitors here, and two of them I'm just watching the tracking, the, the changes that dig and stumbled upon. Everybody's moving to... Um, responsive margins, trying to copy Pinterest and scoop it. I mean, everybody's struggling. You can really look at, I've talked to some of the CEOs of some pretty mid-sized companies like my friend who owns scoop.it and other, everything else. And you start looking at what's happening, and their real juggle is to um, get the cybernetic balance between bringing you an audience and giving you good rankings. And it's just really amazing to watch a lot of these platforms kind of struggle to, to enter into the new cybernetic models. And they're changing their interaction. They're changing to a, a variable response. So my point here is that this module is designed not only to help you organize whatever it is appropriate for your syndication, 
It's also designed for us to um, keep you informed about what is and is not working in terms of platforms while giving you the flexibility to make up your own mind. Yeah. This is why we provide our, our opinions in other areas like the membership area. Okay. Go ahead, Matt. Cool. So basically, um, DWS Network Empire, the whole, the whole package is a stackable system, okay? So the Network Empire stackable system sits in the core of everything. This is the business process. This is the A to Z uh, of the whole system. And this is supported by the training area where we have all the training that educates you on how to use the stackable system and what to think about and how to go about doing your business. Underneath it, supporting the stackable system is DWS, and this is the actual tool you use to process all the information. So you get a complete solution using the stuff. So when we say look at the whole process now, what we're going to do today is we're essentially going to hop across out of here, and we're going to get it right into DWS. So in the last webinar, we spoke about the Silo framework and Empires. We went through these two tabs, and we showed you in detail how to go about using these things. Today we're going to speak about the DNA tab, okay, this is a DNA braid, and this is a very, very, very important module which is overlooked by many, many people, okay, well, it's, a lot of people don't understand it, so what I've done for you today is I've gone ahead and I've created just a simple flowchart, which I'm going to zoom into quickly here, okay, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to just talk about the DNA braid and, and to cover the points that it highlights and what it deals with. So as Russell said many times, DNA consists of the thing, what it's made up of. What is the module made up of? DNA, okay? And the DNA braid, with the word braid, essentially it's the connection of things. Now what we're connecting is keywords, and we're using words to define things, right? In our marketing and our promotions. So when we come to the DNA braid, and what we're dealing with is the paid description. There's certain constraints that you should use when using DNA braid. There's planning involved. There's things you have to think about. And the DNA braid is also used in tracking. Okay. So starting at the top, the page description. And basically, the page is broken down to a primary keyword, supporting synonym keywords, and supporting keywords. Okay. Those are the three components that basically define a page. When we look at our silo structure, okay, here for example is a structure that we have carpet cleaning and we've got a lot of local based stuff in here covering different areas. This silo and these categories create a theme. Now when we deal with the DNA braid, the DNA braid essentially defines a page but it also becomes part of a bigger picture, which is the whole theme that falls within that silo structure. Okay, so for example, cleaning tips. Let's look at another one. Carpet cleaning services. The steam cleaning, rug cleaning, carpet and upholstery cleaning, dry carpet cleaning, office cleaning, off the builders cleaning, deep cleaning services. All of these words define carpet cleaning services theme. Now with the DNA braid, we take carpet cleaning services, for example, and we start defining what that is. But before we start defining it in the planning section, I just want to mention and speak about the constraints. When creating your DNA braid, never take more than three to five keywords. And the reason why we say this is because you, you don't want to water down your theme. You want to take the most important keywords that define that page, that story. Okay. The next thing you want to do is when you're looking at choosing your DNA braid keywords, you don't want to pay attention to competing pages. You want keywords that have PPC cost to them and they have traffic associated. Okay. Now the DNA braid, when you look at the silo theme, all the braid keywords that define a page also essentially need to support and define the theme. Okay. Then we drop one down, it has to define parts of the theme and it has to define the page. Okay. And these keywords need to best describe the page story. Okay, so if you've got five primary keywords that you're going to use, which are synonyms, supporting keywords, and the primary keyword, if you only take those five keywords, you must be able to sort of get an idea of what that page is all about. Okay, now when choosing your DNA break keywords, the reason why you, you sort of choosing them, when you look at the process of where we're at in our, our flow, 
we have the solid framework screen over here. We've got the DNA braid. The very next thing we have here is the team, which is uh, just before we start writing our content. But essentially, if, if the team screen wasn't there, you'd have solid framework, DNA braid, content. The braid sits between the framework and the content. Now, we use the DNA braid to define the framework and the writers use the DNA braid to write the content. So when we look at this, these DNA braid keywords will be used in the page title, they'll be used in the headline, they'll be used in the copy, and they'll be used in the anchor text. So when thinking about this whole story, if we took a keyword like, for example, uh, Steam Cleaning Glasgow, we could basically come here and just type in Steam and see what comes back. Okay, and what we want to do here is we want to get words that define steam cleaning. So I just do a search through the keyword grid. I see what keywords come back, and over here we can see steam cleaners, steam cleaner, carpet steam cleaning, carpet steamer, steam and carpets. You can go through this whole list, right? And you can cherry pick words that find that story that you want to work on. Okay. So for steam cleaning carpets, we can go and cherry pick the best keywords that will tell the story of that steam cleaning service. Okay. So um, before I carry on, um, I just want to see if there's any questions coming through. Okay. Nothing yet? We're okay. Um, just continue. I've got these. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're okay. You can continue. Cool. So now the next thing is tracking. Why is the DNA braid important to tracking? Okay. Basically what happens is when we create a DNA braid in DWS, the system takes these keywords that you cherry picked and when we come to promoting the, the web page that we've actually got in our solid structure, these keywords get automatically injected into the anchor text by the system. Okay. So the system will rotate through all the keywords and it will put it in as anchor text, which will link back to the primary article that you're promoting. Now, when the PKMM module gets completed, essentially what's going to happen is in that anchor text we build out, we add tracking code. And that's going to give us a step down of the entire buying product cycle. So what's going to happen is we can see which writer wrote the primary content on our website. We can see what anchor text was used, linking back from the promotion. We'll know what article was the promotion. We'll know what platform was placed on. We'll know which writer wrote the promotion. We'll also know which publisher put the, the uh, promotional content out on the web. We'll also know when it was published, and we'll also know how long it took a person from the time they clicked on the link to come to our primary site how long it took them to actually make a decision to buy something and if that traffic that came from that website actually converts into buying traffic. Hey, hey Matt, Yeah. Uh, before we move on, it looks like we do have a question that's contextual. Sure. I'm not sure what it is. Tora is asking where you were looking for the synonyms and supporting keywords pre on your previous when you were on the screen. Sure. All I did is I went to the filter. I typed in Steam because I was looking at the Steam Cleaning Glasgow. So typically the process would work like this. We would click on the keyword we want to work with and we would set it. Um, once the screen reloads, you'll see it goes in bright red. We select the Steam Cleaning Glasgow. I then want to find all the words that have Steam within the, the whole shingle. So Steam could have anything in the prefix or the suffix. You just type Steam in, you do the search, and when it came back, it basically gave us 147 keywords we can choose from from our database of keywords we've imported in. Okay, so yeah, I we hope everybody um, hope everybody understands what shingle means. If not, just leave a question and I'll send you the definition. Okay, so over here, Torah, we've we've got all the words containing Steam. So if I press Control F and I just highlighted all the Steam words, this is very important. Once we cherry pick our words, our five or six best words. We'll have steam cleaners, steam cleaner, and over here we can see there's 22 conversions, there's 203 conversions. It's a word that's used a lot. This is a profitable keyword. 
steam cleaners. So we can use this as a, a, a synonym of. So typically what we'll do is we'll say, I want that one, I want that one. Carpet steam cleaning is another good keyword. Uh, carpet steamer is another word. That's the actual machine. Steam clean carpets is another good one we can use. So we've got like five keywords we want. All we need to do now is simply go to the bottom of the screen and we can say add primary synonym terms or add primary supporting keywords. So while we're working on the Silo Framework screen, we essentially can build out our DNA braids simply by following this process. Now, like I said before, don't go and cherry pick 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 keywords. Pick the keywords that are the best, that are going to best define the story of steam cleaning under the carpet cleaning services. So our side has carpet cleaning services, but we essentially want to speak about steam cleaning. So you want to have words like services, for example. So um, I can type in service, and if I go next, there's nothing in my list. Okay. So what I do is I use the F, control F function here and, and I, I do a lot of stuff. But with steam there's a lot of information about steam cleaning over here. Like for example, Stanley, Steen, Stanley Steamer. If that's a good keyword, it's worth looking into. Uh, steam cleaning, steam floor cleaners. There's a lot of words we can use here. And it depends on how you want to position that page when you talk about it. And that's, that's the, the, the core principle of the DNA braid at the silo framework level. Okay, good. Let's just take a pause here. I've got to answer. Um, several folks came in on the shingle thing. I'm going to answer it um, quickly, and um, Matt has taken a lot of this in, into consideration, so I'm going to give a super quick introduction. When you take the word steam, uh, shingle, think of the shingles of a house, and when hopefully you're familiar with like how shingles on your roof overlap. Keywords and the way that most of the search um, algorithms operate also work in that function with words overlapping. That's how the index works. So take the word steam. That would be what we call the seed word. Steam cleaning would be the second shingle. Steam cleaning services would be the third shingle long tail. The long tail gets longer and longer. Steam cleaning services in Phoenix would be a longer shingle chain. Steam cleaning services in Phoenix, Arizona would be even longer. Steam cleaning services in Phoenix, Arizona, United States. So hopefully you get the picture. And what happens is very important to slow down if, you, if you're fairly new at this and understand the power of what this is because knowing what I just expressed to you will shrink the web from being this gigantic multi-billion page competition to about five websites who are competing with you. The reason that's the case is because when you type in a search term, when I type in a steam cleaning service into the search engine, not in phrase match but in broad, um, or actually within phrase match, in other words, steam cleaning service phrase match, Google is only returning the terms. It's only going to return the websites and the listings that are it's called proximity driven. If there's nobody in the whole internet that has a web page with steam cleaning services with the words touching in a shingle fashion, then, then what it does is it goes to the second best. It goes to proximity driven search results. So for example, if nobody in the whole world, I mean this is silly obviously, right? But if nobody in the whole world had a page optimized for the word steam cleaning services in the title, and on the context and the keywords, whatever, what Google will return to you is steam, blah, 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 cleaning, blah, 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 services, Phoenix. Okay? So the thing here, the thing here is when you start looking at that, you'll find in some of the mid tails to long tails, you have no competition. This is why long tail targeting has become so popular. But the silly thing about all that is, is that why not just do it all up front? What Matt is showing you is if you do it right in the beginning, you're going to cover all those shingles anyway, and your competition and everybody online is not even going to know what the hell you did, okay? Because they don't understand proximity-driven, they don't understand shingling, and they don't understand how it really works in terms of systematic overlaps. Now, the first time in history that it's become fairly public how shingling actually works and how proximity-driven search results work is with what we call Google Instant. If you have your Google Instant turned on, you can see the words kind of you know, if you type in steam cleaning and you have it activated right, you see all those suggestions that come up. That's kind of Google starting to um, become, you know, augment that through uh, showing results. And the reason I stopped to slow down to tell you this is it's really, really important. Okay, now, Matt, here's another question. Um, 
uh, Eve is asking, okay, are shingles similar to keyword stemming? So I'll let you answer that question. I mean, I have my own view on it. So Yeah, well, my, my take on keyword stemming is um, it's a yes and a no answer, okay? Um, when we look at the silo structure, right, um, and we're looking at the whole story, so we took the silo here and we took these, these, these categories underneath it. Essentially, if we typed in cleaning, okay, and I highlighted cleaning, and we looked at the prefix and the suffix, yes, we've got steam Glasgow, rug Glasgow, carpet and upholstery, cleaning, dry carpet cleaning, office service, after builders, deep services. They're all wrapped around cleaning, okay? This is where the keyword stemming comes in because when we, we basically map out our style of structure and we define the theme, by taking the DNA braid and putting in the supporting synonyms of that word as, a, as well as the words that semantically support that keyword, they've got a close relationship. That's what it's basically meaning with semantically supported. When your, start, your pages start getting ranked and you're getting more traffic from these pages, the keyword stemming starts only starts kicking in once you hit a certain, certain threshold with your website. And then Google starts seeing you, okay, you're a good source of information, and they start, if someone types in steam, cleaning, uh, Glasgow, you'll get ranked for it typically. But with the stemming, what happens is it's a mix-up of all the words within the theme. So you could have dry carpet, uh, dry carpet cleaning and the guy's from Glasgow and you'll get picked up from the dry carpet cleaning keyword. Or you might type in dry carpet cleaning Glasgow and you'll get picked up for the keyword because you're targeting that area within someone in your site and you've got the information it needs. So the stemming is actually the, the add-ons. This, this is the cream that flows to the top. It's something that you're not specifically targeting, but because of the, the thematic yeah, and relationship. Again, so yeah, and exactly. Yeah, and again, when we're talking, it's it, it's better to understand it in terms of proximity-driven results, and that's what people get confused about. Um, this is why I think shingling is a better way to understand it, because, for example, I can look at cleaning here, and it would be a mistake to target cleaning as your seed word. Okay, uh, however, because you you know, especially if you're in a carpet business, because cleaning, you know, I've found working with clients through the years that you're better to focus on a noun for stemming than you are on action, because most businesses are object-oriented. I hope that makes sense. In other words, most people are selling stuff. If you're selling cleaning uh, everything in the world, then you might want your mega site, for, if for some crazy reason, for some insane reason, you wanted to launch a site on all things cleaning everything in the world, then you could focus on that word. So what we call accidental rankings happens from staying thematically in your conversation about your product or service. And, don't try to conceptualize or become over technical with this. Like, a lot of people have this thing where they think that, oh my gosh, somewhere out there in virtual in internet land, there's the perfect combination of synonyms that I need to, to create. Well, there's not perfection, but what you are gonna find using Domain Move Studio is a, an appropriate set of words that is way bigger and better and, and more accurate than your competition around your products and services. So don't get too hung up in, in over-optimization with um, stemming. Just make sure you're focused on finding the possible variations of your theme, including them in the way the map's showing you with the DNA. And it's really good to stay product-oriented. I found, I did some tests with some clients where when they stayed focused on their products for synonymic sets versus the action or, you know, the secondary word, you don't want to rank for the word steam, for example. Okay, that's not, that's not, that's not a root word that you want to rank for. So you've got to find the sweet spot in your shingle. For me, uh, system, you know, steam cleaning services, if that was my core business model, if you looked at my books and I showed you that I made $80,000 a year on steam cleaning services, in, that becomes my main focus. That, that, those three overlapping words become my main focus. Yeah. Everything else is incidental. And, and again, because we've given you so much power here, there would be a possibility of getting really, really lost in stuff that does not matter. And I'm not saying that it won't matter eventually, but I'm saying you've got to find, you've got to remember what you're selling and what you're targeting. Yeah. Another thing that's, um, hey, another, uh, Matt, another thing, question that came in, I'm going to go through some of these and have you answer them. I'm just holding um, up the question. I just want to finalize one last thing on that last previous point. Sure, go ahead. Uh -huh. this, is, this is why. Um, 
we say to you the constraints is no more than three to five keywords to support Correct. a primary keyword. Yeah. It's to stop you from bleeding and uh, watering down the focus of what you're looking at. Because if you put 50 yeah. keywords in there, when he comes to your writer, he's going to look at all these words and he's going to go, okay, cool. Now, what do I need to do with all these words? It makes his job very difficult. But when you're highly focused up front and you take no more than three to five, it makes the it makes everything cleaner and easier and more focused. So you got to stay focused. When exactly, you exactly right. And and I just want to I want to step back here and uh, you know let's just speak a little bit uh, candidly about this. Here's the great secret, you guys. What are you selling? Here's the, the, the common denominator in all the students that I've coached, that Matt's coached, clients that we've had, everything from, um, you know, it's, it's not easier to work with large clients, larger companies, because, you know, somehow they have more money to pay you as a, as a you know, as an SEO. That's not the only reason. One of the, the real reason that it's easier to work with larger companies or mid-sized companies are they have real products and numbers. Okay, and so it's not, you're not data mining. A lot of the people, I mean, I know there's guys on this call, they don't even really have a product and they're trying to build out these mega sites. Okay, that is actually incredibly difficult until you get clear. Focus on your product. If you don't know what you're selling, <coughs> you really can't do a very clean, if you, if you don't have, if you're data mining for, you know, keyword gold and you don't have an objective, you're going to see keyword gold everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's not, that, that is not, especially with this tool, in fact, Matt's done you a disservice if you don't have a product because you're going to see that the whole world is full of money everywhere. <laughs> and so if you focus on everything, you get nothing done. So I'm going to give you my biggest secret, my biggest tip here of every client of any size, from the multi-million dollar clients that I work with uh, to somebody who's still figuring out what business they want to be in. With multi-million dollar clients, they have usually too many products, so the the process begins. The process begins finding out which ones are the most profitable and how can you optimize them better, and then move on to other keywords. Now, guys, that affects keyword research totally because if a client's doing really, this is a true case study with my current client. He makes millions of dollars per year on three of his products, and virtually an eighteenth of that on about two thousand other products. Now, what's the first thing that I do? I'm going to go to those three products, right? I'm going to find out. You know, what, is, what are they doing there? And then we're going to tear apart those shingles. Okay, for example, if it's, uh, I don't know, uh, windshield wipers, you're going to, and if he's making a million dollars a year on windshield wipers, you're going to find out any of the missed opportunities with that object, with that stem, and then you're going to break it out the way that Matt's showing you now. So keep it practical. So, um, try to move away from getting into using this tool as a data mining tool and getting lost within it. We have more questions here. Eve had also asked Matt, uh, why would you not want to include the golden niche keywords? And at what point can't, would you add those into a site? And, and when we want to build pages beyond the first style article pages, Eve, I hope that I'm starting to answer some of those questions again. What golden niche? What are you selling? What's your KPI? The business rules in Domain Web Studio are amazing because they actually hold you to uh, your product focus, what I call your learning target or your profit target. If you don't have anything to put in there, I coached a student the other day that doesn't really have a product yet, and we found ourselves like making stuff up in the business decision screen, right? Because that's all you can do. It's an estimate. Yeah. But when you have actual product numbers, you can put those in. Another question for you, Matt, is if not covered already, um, it might be helpful, helpful to quickly define the difference and importance between synonyms and supporting keywords. I'll let you do that. Okay. Well, basically, your synonyms will be like, for example, Steam cleaners, if that is what you're selling as a product, okay, then the synonym would be steam cleaner. It's, it's, it's a, the same word or a different way of saying it. The supporting keywords would mm -hmm. be keywords that define the story, that support the story. They've got a high Larry, the high local aggregate relevance. So, for example, if you look at carpet steam cleaning, that is totally connected to a steam cleaner. The steam cleaner cleans a carpet. Carpet steam cleaning is a service that works with the steam cleaner. So there's a, a relationship between the two words. It's not just some other random word. That's what we call a supporting keyword. It supports exactly. what you're selling. It's as simple. Yeah, as I know that. that. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And I know there are, there is some cute, some confusion for some people because whenever you use a grammatical word or a grammar-based word like synonym, it has one particular meaning. 
Um, just a, a quick aside, we came up with this, the word synonym sort of evolved in our software when we were using search engine synonyms yeah, starting in 2006. And what we mean by search engine synonym is, you know, steam clean, tilde, tilde key steam cleaners. Okay, that's a search engine proven synonym, okay? That means that Google, uh, whenever Google thinks about, uh, you know, steam cleaners, uh, it also thinks about other things. And we've, on Kraken, we've automated that for you. It pulls those in and, uh, yeah. Uh, you can see that along with steam cleaners as he scrolls down, um, yeah, you can undo that, Matt. Okay. Because Google does it for you. Um, just the broad, you can see, just scroll down the screen. Um, yeah, steam cleaners, um, go ahead and those, you can see the word steam and cleaning. Cleaning is semantic, semantically related to steam cleaner. Scroll down a little more. Um, sometimes you have five, even ten bolded terms. So you're looking at the things that are bolded. Cleaning, steam cleaner, steam clean, steam and cleaning. Sometimes you really get what we call, what I coined as pure diverse terms in here, which is really nice. Those are the original ideas behind what we mean by search engine proven synonyms. Now, the thing is, is that a synonym is not necessarily not a supporting keyword. It's just whether or not you use it in your blueprint. Okay? So, and there's no perfection. What has happened is that we've moved from binding you to only doing that to considering your business model and choosing synonyms that are product oriented, like you, in your company, you might have a synonym for steam cleaner that is also used. Look up the different industry terms for steam cleaner, and if it's standard within your area or in your demographic, go ahead and use that as one of the synonyms. It makes sense, even if, it's not, even if it is not in Google as a tilde. Yeah. Many, of the times you will find that, many of the times you will find that Google also agrees with that, and many of the times you won't. So hopefully that gives you another, an idea of how we evolved the top-level silo landing page and profit target, that is your product focus into a synonymic set. And also, if you start looking at your competition in Kraken or DWS, you'll find out that people, your competition is not ranking for all the keywords that are definitions of that product synonymically in the industry or with the Google tilde. And that is why this system is so powerful, because they simply do not take the time to build their pages based on all the ways that you can say steam cleaner. Does yeah. that make sense, you guys? Yeah, so I'll just come back I to... I couldn't summarize it better. Yeah, I'll come back to DNA Braid again. DNA meaning made up of, Braid is the interwoven connection between words. That's why we call it the DNA Braid. It's you braiding words of like meaning to define the story, to define yeah, the product. And I would even, yeah, exactly. And after dealing with um, some coaching students and, and some clients the last couple of months, I want to get even more intense about this. You're, you're braiding your... the different ways to talk about your product in the same way. Okay, different ways to say product X. That's another kind of braiding. Different ways to say, I mean, that's where you're making your money. And I had a student, it's just, that's why I'm kind of on about this. I had a student who was braiding everything but the thing they were selling. And I'm just like, oh, I failed you. <laughs> it's not, that's not it. You focus on what are you selling? What is your profit target? Braid those first. Now, here's a question for you, Matt. Do supporting keywords have to have less competing pages than the C keyword? Aha. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> okay, no. No, it's not like that. I, constraint yeah, not number like three. <laughs> DNA yeah, keywords good, are not good dependent one. on competing pages. <laughs> it says it right there. So it's a good question, Tora, and we wrote it out there. It, you know what, guys? I don't really care about... I mean, just, think, just, just, just toss this aside for a second. Let's think about this. I'm building a website to sell my frickin' product. Okay, it doesn't matter what the frickin' competing pages are. If that's what's for sale on my top level silo, I'm gonna use it as a synonym. Exactly. Okay, sales first. What are you selling? I mean, it just, I really gotta make sure that you guys don't get caught up in that. At the end of the day, it's incredibly uncomplicated. And we're designing a massive tool that requires rigorous language and fancy terminology, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, what are you selling? And whoever says, uses the verbiage around that object, that thing, that product or service, the most number of ways in, on the web page in the most uh, SEO friendly way wins the search engine game yeah. through shingling, period. So that's, that's the end of it. It's not really complicated. So focus on the client, what they're selling, focus on what you're selling. 
Um, I was giving one Go of ahead, the members. Matt. I was giving one of the members um, some help today, and he was asking me about siloing and what words to use in the the navigation, all that kind of stuff. And I asked him a simple question. All I said to him was, "Who buys the product, the bots or the user?" That's correct. Now, I want to again get back on my soapbox just for a second because <laughs> again, this the, stu the student that I had was really helpful in showing me where I'd failed them. And as a coach, I want and a kind of you know as a service organization, I want to make sure that I really, it's been common through the years, but I still see it's hanging around. Torah, the first thing that I do, the reason we suggest using Kraken is because Kraken really does all this, that on the other tab where Matt showed us the, uh, the tilde function, um, we're doing all that automatically. Those synonyms <laughs> that you get back, that bring, I don't want to have to think about the technical, I love search engine proven synonym because I've proven through the years that when you're taking these bold terms, Matt, do another word, just Show them an example. Show them something else that's maybe um, a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try a single word. Try a, try a stem cell. I mean, a single word like survival. I guess automobiles is a perfect example. Something totally basic. And what you'll do, what you'll do is you'll see. Um, I'll just type it in. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, what you'll see is that that's that's not a good one. Yeah. I believe the tilde function cannot have a space. I believe. I'm not sure if that's changed or not. Yeah, remove the space, yeah. Okay, you know, the, the main thing here is just to realize that I don't like to think about this. I'm too busy, there you go. I'm too busy thinking about my client. So here's what I do, okay? I use Kraken, there's a reason we tell you to use Kraken. And you know, TLKT provides some similar results, but I don't have time to think about this. So when I'm building my client site and I'm focused on the primary term, I'm asking myself, what are you selling? And they say automobiles, well I'm like, okay, well where do I start? If they tell me they're selling the new, you know, 100% electrical leaf by Hyundai, that's very specific. Then I start drilling into that. I want to see just as an anchor what the search engine improvement synonyms are. And I don't have to worry about it because I use Kraken. It just does it all for me. When I drill in, I know that I'm getting technical, functional words based on what the search engines believe are synonymic with automobile. Okay. And so by the time I import those Kraken words into Domain Web Studio and the upcom upcoming Network Empire software, which has all of this in the next few months, um, you already have that stuff taken care of. But if my customer, Tora, if my customer is not selling Toyota, I'm not going to use that search engine improvement synonym, am I? This is why in Kraken we have you delete synonyms that are not appropriate to your business model or your client. If they're not selling Toyotas, even though Toyota is a branded synonym, according to Google's brain, for the word automobile, I ain't going to freaking use it. All right, I'm being kind of intense about this today because this is time for you guys to like get out of this. Know that the technical stuff is just a spot check. And if it's not congruent with your customer's business model, forget about it. And what I see happening is people getting caught up in the technical aspect of what does Google think. Now, let's look at this really closely. Uh, you can see, Torah, that Toyota is perfectly synonymous with, the, with one of the broadest terms on the Internet, automobile. Okay, car is a little bit more frequent, right? Now, what's interesting about that is Toyota, let's think about what happened. Toyota has enough money to tell Google what their synonyms are. They've just changed the English language technically. That's called semantic drift. I call it digital semantic drift. In other words, he who has the most amount of money for links can change language. And that's actually literally true, by the way. Yeah. Okay, so what we're seeing here, what we're seeing here in bold it's great for everybody on this call to really, truly, and deeply understand this, is the person who has the most amount of money to throw links at the word automobile. What this means is that for every page that has the word automobile on it, Toyota is a significantly co-occurring word with the word automobile, so much so that Google doesn't even know that automobile and Toyota are two separate words. Do you understand what I'm saying, you guys? Yeah. Okay, so this is why we have you import Kraken words into Domain Web Studio, you can do it without that, exactly, co-occurrence, good one, Torah. So you can do it without all that. You can do it manually if you want. You could go and paint. It takes me about two days to go through all the search engine proven synonyms and keep a list. And then when I get in front of the client, I say, by the way, you don't sell Toyotas, do you? No? Okay, well, there, I just wasted two hours, right? So you want to know up front what you, you want to match your product, your customer's product, inventory, and it's a real pain when they have 5,000 products like one of my current clients, right? 
<laughs> with the search engine proven synonyms and then remove the ones that are not relevant to what they're selling. You import them back and let's go back to Domain Web Studio, Matt. And go back to Domain One Studio. <laughs> Is Toyota only Islamic? Yeah, um, I, um, <laughs> Kevin, you just have to be a, a stickler, don't you? <laughs> I don't even think Matt, Matt's not in the U.S., so I don't think it's true in the U.S. But so that, that was actually to make matters even more complicated. That was a country targeted synonymic relevancy. Um, the point here is that by the time you guys have done this using Kraken or TLKT, um, you'll you'll already be blending your customers client your customers products with the shingles, and you will already have weeded out non-relevant search engine proven synonyms. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Yeah, but that's all there is to it, really. Yeah. So what happens is um, with DWS, we can bind synonyms simply by checking them. So we select the steam cleaning, we grab the synonyms we wanted, and we can define them as synonyms or supporting terms. Alternatively, if we've got keywords that are client-driven, we click on the DNA tab, and we can actually add our custom words here. So we've got two functions we can do here. So if we go back to carpet cleaning services uh, for steam cleaning, what DWS gives you is the ability to actually add supporting keywords and synonyms manually. You just simply type them in. So if they're not in your keyword list from Kraken or the last keyword tool, the tools that you're using, you can just come here and just key them in and add them. So like I said before, the keyword is not dependent on competing pages. You want to make sure that it's got PPC cost and traffic. There's no point putting keywords as DNA break keywords if they don't have any value, i.e. people are not using them or people are not paying to market for those terms. So you want to capture all the keywords that have got money and traffic tied to them in your DNA braid as well. You want to put that into the mix. So there's a deeper reason why we do this. And the next image I drew for you was uh, the DNA braid micro net, micro nets is what I just basically called it. In the whole picture, when we look at the end story, when we start promoting, um, for every single page that we create, okay, there's a DNA braid associated to one page. There's anchor, a series of anchor texts associated, which are essentially the DNA braid keywords. And these get pushed through promotional content, conversational content, branding content, and media content. So when we start promoting, for every single page we promote, okay, and we tick off as done, we bound a DNA braid through the anchor text, through the copy, to any of these promotional activities, whether it's media, branding, conversational, promotional content. The effect of that is basically when the promotional content gets published, it goes out of the DWS feed and it goes through RSS directories, bookmarks, and social hub type sites. These then link back to our promotional content page and that backlink juice basically flows from the promotional page, page through the DNA bread anchor text back to our primary page, that is our money page. Okay. Now this is very important that you understand what's happening here. Okay. We've created a synonymic net specific to every single page within our silo structure through the promotional channel. And this is creating a lot of little micro networks for every single page within the silo structure. Um, I hope you guys are getting this because this is this is the power of the DNA braid and what's actually happening in the background in DWS when you're just following the system. So typically, guys, when they do link wheels and they do all these love triangles and what do they want to call these these linking plans, the guys typically grab three <laughs> random keywords, okay, and they chuck them in and they spin them and they rotate them. We've not done that. We've come to this whole story with a whole different mindset. We've come here with a mindset that is basically saying, look, what am I defining? What are my constraints? What is my planning? Okay. What am I, what's, what's the definition of my theme? What's the definition of the absolute page that I'm in my theme? What keywords define that page? How is my writer going to use them throughout the whole thing for the painkiller uh, article writing? And with that, we're looking at the silo structure, we're looking at how the whole story comes together and then when we come to promote, this symbiotic relationship that we create through the DNA braid over here creates these micronets, the search engines pick up on this, they see all the backlinks that are semantic, semantically relevant 
linking back to the promotional content, which is also linking back to our primary content. And this is how we get past all this, these penalties that have been created because we're not worried about creating penalties. We we're focusing totally on our products, on our services, what we're doing. Okay, we focus yes, on you, that. Can you please explain precisely how to build a love triangle? A love triangle? I'm kidding, man. <laughs> that was a joke, man. I, 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 I'd never heard of that. I, I was just, hey, I'm, I'm trying to picture that in my mind as far as link building. <laughs> That's where you take SD Nuke, uh, X Rumor, and uh, Scrapebox, yeah. and you, you throw them all together. That's when you get a bunch of. That's when you get. <laughs> that's when you get a bunch of five dollar bills out and start randomly trying fiber gigs. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know, I I just want to bring it back into uh, the question forum here, and uh, Kevin, I'm not even going to repeat what you just said. So um, <laughs> let's take let's take a look at at what this really means. I want to make sure that we're looking at it in practical terms. Uh, how is this going to match? Describe how this is going to look uh, within the Domain Web Studio application. Let's go back to the application and give it, let's get some real world uh, practical application. Okay. So let's, let's take this, pro yeah, take the process from the DNA braid to where it's going to end up quickly without getting caught in any of the one steps. Sure. For those who are new, we have several new people on the call. So explain sure. how the pages with all these synonymic <laughs> sets and themes are going to end up ranking higher and what process we go through in the app. Right, so essentially what happened is we mapped out our silo framework. We then came to DNA Braid and we defined each page. Now, the way I like to think about the, the pages in the silo framework is I like to think about each page as a campaign. And the words that define this page, this campaign, are my DNA Braid keywords. So I check, uh, collect my 3 to 5 and then I come to the content where I write my content. When I write my content and I assign them to my writers, essentially what happens is when they come to write, the DNA braid becomes available for them. Okay, so when I click on this here, now you can see we've not actually added any yet, but they'll be sitting in this block over here. This is where the DNA braid cubes will appear on this thing. Okay, so what happens here, it says synonyms required, supporting keywords required. You want to have your DNA break keywords, so that's why we put that required in there. You want to have them through the headline, through the article, copy, everything. The contextual keywords, i.e. the keywords that define the navigation of your site, are optional. Your writer can cherry pick from these. Okay. So what happens is the guys write the content, they then come and publish the website. Once the website is published, they come to promote. Now, when they come to promote the website, okay, let me get to another project. Uh, uh, let's, let's look at this one. Yeah, that's not done. Um, just switch out of this here. While Matt's doing this, I'm going to just get a quickly a little bit into a question here. Is that cool, Matt, while you're transferring them? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's... I want to talk about content uh, if we have any time left today. We're almost at the top of the hour. We wanted to keep it to an hour. We can go a little bit over. Um, just wanted to say something about content. A question came in recently. Uh, guys, don't buy private label research, I mean private label content unless you're a seriously skilled black hat and you understand our WR1, WR2 rings. The amount of return, on the, the diminishing return that you're going to get on <coughs> crappy content is don't even get me started. I'm I'm done some I'm doing so many experiments right now on transcription, on video and all this stuff. We'll talk about more of this in upcoming courses. Anyway, Matt, I didn't want to hijack you there. Go ahead and continue. And that's fine. We'll get more into it. So so what happens is we've gone through a process, we defined the silo framework, did our braid, we wrote our content, we came to promote, the writers have come, they've written the content. Now, when they come to write the professional promotional content, here you can see we've got our DNA Braid Q is defined, and there's the article that's our primary article. Okay, so what happens is the writer looks at the primary article, it decides to write the painkiller article, which creates an open loop for the promotion, and he just simply copies and pastes the the anchor text. Now, DWS basically creates the anchor text for you, so there you can see cleaning services is the anchor text, and it puts in all the tracking dots and everything for you already. So you just write, copy and paste, stick it in. And once it gets published, right, 
and the writer comes back and says, I've done his tasks, and he puts the URL in. This hits the RSS feed, okay, that comes out of DWS, and that gets syndicated through your one feed setup. And this is where this whole channel basically takes all that information and it pushes it through these, and then they start linking back. They create backlinks to our primary con our promotional content. Our promotional content then links back to our primary content. And, and that's how the whole DNA braid actually gets woven all the way through. So if you see what happens here is, We've taken DWS and we've pushed the, the primary content through our promotion page. We've pushed it through our primary content page. It's getting pushed through all the syndication channels that we're using. And all those backlinks are synonymously relevant to each page that it's linking back to. So working this backwards, this is a promotional article, but it's pointing back to the cleaning services page on our website. DWS automatic gives you the link to link back to the right page, which is essentially this article. And this article has all our DNA break keywords sprinkled through it. So hopefully that, that answers the, the question you asked, Russ. Yeah, that's good. And um, that's good. So we're kind of, I'm just looking at these questions. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to... Here's a question from Eve. In the content creation area, do you have to tell DWS which DNA braid keywords you are using? I think you probably answered that one. That gets defined in the style of framework and the DNA tab. Once you define it over here, um, here's a simple way of checking which, where you've missed DNA braids. Um, I created a, a spreadsheet type of look of the whole site. Um, as the page loads, I'll show it to you guys. Typically when I build up my sites, I have the silo framework open and I build my site with multiple tabs. So I simply come here to view silo framework blueprint, I right click and I say open in a new tab and I have my framework open, I have my DNA braid screen and then I have this. And here you can see all the gaps where our supporting keywords or our braids are not defined. So there I've defined two domestic cleaning services, I've got house cleaning service, residential cleaning service. I've used those two keywords as DNA supporting keyword braids that define the domestic cleaning service. So all you do is you go through the list and you fill in all these gaps and then yep. when you look at the whole story, you have all these words that define the website. Now your writers come and they use them. So that's what you want to do is you want to open that up there while you're working and you want to just define the story. And when you look at it from this perspective, you can actually look at the story as a whole. You can actually see commercial cleaning, what would it be, what would that be, what would it be. And you can actually go in and remove stuff from the DNA braid screen when it doesn't, when you've got too many overlaps. You can actually really refine it nicely. And remember, the, yeah. whole, the whole thing is just you telling the story, but you're using the keywords exactly. that are important to the story. Yeah, don't, try not to overthink it. I know that's kind of an ironic statement with an application of this size. Uh, but the main thing is the, the way that you don't overthink it, you guys, is to constantly remember what you're selling throughout the entire storytelling process. You're digital storytellers. First and foremost, you're digital storytellers. If ever you lose the thread or the connection of a lifeline to your digital story, which is the theme of your site, it's the brand, it's, it's conversion by design, <coughs> you're done. And what happens to technicians is they get lost in the story. They, they lose their story, the thread of their story through it. We're making this as easy as possible, which is why where we're moving is into personal brand broadcasting because Broadcasting is really about communicating a story through multi-channels and multimedia files. And on that note, I'm going to answer, Don, you have a question, do we need to find our own content writers for DWS? The answer to that question is at the moment, yes, but we've spent a good portion of this week preparing the done for you buttons, which uh, now is going to be offered. I'm, I'm not allowed, Sue Bell has not allowed me to put a date, throw a date out there as a tease. However, it's really, really close. I mean, we have the done for you. Um, the ability to create content and of different standards. We've got the WR1 and WR2 ring. We even have stuff inside the promotional plan. By the time Matt and I get to the promotional plan, uh, plan webinar in a few weeks here, it'll probably be mostly prepared, the done for you stuff. So again, we'll just look and see how we're doing. But to answer your question, Don, we do not currently have um, DFY now, but we're very, very close and it's a significant part <coughs> of our bandwidth to get the done for you button. So we'll just go over to the 
you know, the content writer, and if you want to, you can upgrade and purchase, you know, articles right in there. You know, and there's other applications that do the same thing. I'm sure you guys are familiar with. So we'll be offering um, our selective writers and only the services that we've tested, which again is is a huge value there. Another thing that Jane is asking Matt is, so the articles show up on the website blog, like if I'm selling a product like Masquerade, um, masks, these type of things, are the articles on the sidebar? Yeah. Yeah, well, Bill, um, Jane. Yeah, we'll give you, Jane. Go ahead and go to um, siloblogbuilder.com. I apologize for men mentioning your product. I hope you're not selling those, but it's a pretty um, it's a pretty conscious group here. We're not going to do anything. Go to siloblogbuilder.com. Uh, watch all our tutorials on what happens when we go from the primary area to the to the blog. And essentially, you can get the blog plugin uh, for all this. It communicates directly with the blog and it builds your menu structure out in a fairly difficult technical structure that is not easy to do with WordPress and all those menus hang out there. Normally Matt has a demo site. We're currently revamping that site right now so it's not available. But yes, to answer your question, you can do that with a WordPress blog. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's also the, the it's, it saves you hours um, with the, the plugin because to do the technical design of the interlinking or the, the relationships of all the, 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 the structures um, it, it manages the whole process for you. Russell, um, I just want to say one thing here. What you, said, you mentioned, that's probably like two, three years ago, we were having a chat and you basically said to me that the DNA braid is like the golden thread that weaves everything together. So I, I yeah. just want to bring that forward. Um, your DNA braid is essentially the golden thread that connects this whole theme together. It's the words that you weave all the way through the whole silo structure. That's your golden thread that uh, you use. Exactly, and my guys, I have a really super like shortcut. Here's my cheat sheet. Okay, take a look at cleaning services. Like when my outsourcer comes to me and says, "Hey, I used Domain Web Studio and I created all these silos and DNA braids," what I do as a product, as a CEO or as a manager, is I already know who my competition is. Like for cleaning services, right? I'm probably going to know my four or five competitors either from using Kraken and also just because I'm in the business, right? Or if I have a client, my client will give me their competitors. What I do is I will actually go manually to the search engines. This is just if you feel like you need to spot check something manually. Okay, you don't have to do this, but I'll go ahead and I'll look up commercial cleaning. I'll look up upholstery, and again, do not do it on personalized search. You want to do it when you're logged out of Google, and you want to do it on your on the legacy version. Okay, um, I look at each one of these words: commercial cleaning, upholstery cleaning, or if you're using a ranking software, that's fine too. Although they're very sketchy right now, many of the ranking softwares you got to be check and double check. You know, I check to see if my, which competitors are ranked for one or more of the terms that my outsourcer is telling me should be part of the DNA. And what what gets really interesting is a lot of the times you'll see two of your competitors ranked for three of them, one of your competitors ranked for one of them, two of your competitors ranked for four of them. You will almost never see even one of your competitors ranking for over half of the words that you have just spent a little extra time and discovered are extremely profitable and high conversion in your industry. So imagine this, you guys. You've taken that little extra step. You're going to rank for all of the terms that are only spot rankings for the combination of your competitors. That's the whole point behind this. To do that by hand, trust me, guys. Oh, man, I've done dozens by hand. It takes weeks to clearly think it through, it, and that's only for one silo. This is the reason that we created that application. You want to write for all of them, and remember, your product first. Remember, it's about ranking across multiple versions. Whoever says, you know, whoever says the word profit in the most number of ways, and whoever explains your product or calls your product by its multiple names the most number of times, with the highest optimization on the page wins. And when I say win, I mean you're the one who is having a conversation about that product that Google is by default going to reward you for anyway. Okay? And I'd also like to address on that note something that Dave Jones has said previously. I wasn't blowing you off, Dave, um, because it was a little more you know, end result. At the end of the day, what are you trying to create with WR1 content? You're trying to create readable content that organizes that DNA braid 
and is not writing that sounds like you're trying to stuff those words into the content. Don't do that on WR1 stuff, you guys. No. In fact, I have proven in my testing that you can, you can just focus on the headlines. And the, the first, I mean, keyword density is pretty much toast. Like, don't, don't change or skew the persuasion, the copy, the usefulness, the painkiller content in order to stuff. You can use that if you're churn and burn, Vinny. <laughs> for WRTs, right? You know, you and I have been doing that kind of stuff for a long time. And, that, and that's awesome for driving links forward, inward in WRT. I mean, that's my favorite thing. I'm, I'm channel cloning and content curation automation and pin vid and dang, I can't even keep track of the stuff I'm driving to the inner chambers right now. But for people who, on this call who are just trying to get a website up with their WR1, their core product, focus on that first. That's a different ball game. You need to be really clear on those words, what are you selling? What is your profit target? Focus on that. And if you're, if you're listening to this call today and you do not have a product, you need to find a product. Yeah, okay? you, gotta, you need you gotta, to get clear. You got to define your product first. Um, that's the, the starting point of everything. If you don't have that, you're going to be Correct. chasing a tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're at the top of the hour. Matt, do you have any closing arguments, sir? Yeah, well, um, just today, the DNA braid, this is why we kept it sort of short, but it's, it's, it's a very important tab. Um, just, to, just to close this all off, the DNA braid basically brings everything together and you define it. And when you define it, you're defining it for users. You're defining it for the people who are going to buy your product. You're not defining it for bots. Okay. Now, everybody's trying to build backlinks. They, they're taking a keyword and they're writing hundreds of articles and they're putting it out there to create backlinks. We're not coming from that point of view. We're creating articles to create sales and to drive traffic. The backlink is a byproduct and DWS manages it for you. So you don't have to think about it. It just tells you, use this anchor text, use this anchor text. And it manages the whole backlink portfolio. Okay. So when you've got a portfolio, you need to think of what are the properties within my portfolio. And the, are they worth anything or are they rubbish? And if they're rubbish, throw them out. You don't want to just have them there for the sake of having them there. They must have a specific meaning to the page and to the theme. That's as simple as that. And if you only got one or two words, then only use one or two words. You don't, don't go mad and throw hundreds of keywords in there because you're just going to dilute the whole theme and you'll skew things. So the more focused you are and the more uh, laser focused you are, the better your website's going to rank, the faster it's going to rank, and the clearer the story is going to be to the end user who essentially is the person who's going to buy your product or service. Okay, absolutely. And we'll close with this last question with uh, Eve asking me about the anchor links for the one feed. Are you talking about uh, the software is Main Web Studio spitting out the one feed? I'm assuming that's what you're asking. Matt, I'll let you address that. Is it yeah. currently active? Yes, yes. The, the, in, the promo, in the promotional plan, um, when well, it starts in the content writer, it starts giving the anchor text already. But in the promotional plan, when you write your copy, um, over here at the writing stage, it actually just gives you the, the anchor text already. So we can see here, here's our targeted keyword for the campaign. Now, this is where DWS has managed it. There's a prime example. So the, the, the targeted campaign keyword is the page that we're promoting. But it's telling me use this keyword, upholstery cleaning. That's one of my, my, my anchor text ones, and it's going to be on a blog. So it's already spun that article. It's using one of the DNA braid keywords instead of the primary. So what it does, it'll go through and it'll do it all. So when we come and click into this to write the copy, there's our anchor text, upholstery cleaning. And when we take the href here, yeah, control A, control C, click on source, paste, you can see the URL is pointing to cleaning services, which is our primary keyword. It's got all our tracking code in it, and then it's using upholstery cleaning. So essentially all you can do here is you can wrap this with, uh, if you, okay, well obviously, let's just go back here, but uh,
That's just how your, 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 your writer will do it. So they can come in and uh, tweak it up. So you can say, if you're looking for the best of all street cleaning services in, blah, 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 blah. There you've dropped your link into the copy contextually, and it doesn't sound spammy. It works worth what you're doing. And the place where it's linking back to is talking about cleaning services. So there's our primary, primary article. And um, obviously when they write this article, it'll be. But yeah, the system gives you this here. And when you come to promote this, we've got, track of, we've got the tracking of this. And this article will run through the one feed, which leads the system. So that's just an example of how your DNA braid is used in the promotion and syndication module. Yeah. Okay, I think we're going to be done for today. Um, there's not a ton of other questions. Uh, folks will be back next Wednesday. I'm really enjoying not having to rush through every single thing and like brain dump, you know, five years worth of, you know, all of our developmental processes in it. So it looks like Eve is satisfied with that answer. I know that Eve is super focused on on training with one feed, and I have some surprises coming up for you, Eve, on that in our training area. Um, Matt, thanks a lot. I know it's late there. Um, this has been great. Next week we're gonna just let's go ahead and just recap what we what you're gonna cover next week. Right. So next week we're gonna so talk about we'll we're gonna discover the the team manager screen. We're gonna talk through the team manager screen and um, just show you how to manage a team, how to manage your tasks, how to move. Co content or tasks from one person to another person rapidly. It's just how to control and manage the team in the system. Um, for the guys who don't have teams, it'll be good just to see how easy it is so you can actually go and get someone else to come help you out to do certain type of things. Okay. All right. And that's great stuff. So we'll see you guys next week. We're going to end the call. Uh, Russell Wright, Matt DeCruz, NetworkEmpire.com, signing off. Cheers, everybody.